God's love is chasing after you. He hasn't given up on you. He's crazy about you. Next up comes Solomon. He's going to bring the fire. That was just, I was the warm up. I was like the John the Baptist to what he's about to do. The God of the Bible is a God of love, but he's also a God of wrath. Good afternoon, Sorville. So glad to be here with you guys. I just want to share the gospel with you guys and talk about Jesus. He has changed my life, and I believe he's the hope and the salvation for everyone who calls upon his name and believes. Um, I'm just going to read for you, to you from the Gospel of John, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That uh, Jesus uh, was born 2,000 years ago to the Virgin Mary supernaturally, and he walked on this earth as a man, um, and he was totally human. He, he suffered. He became weak. He needed food and water. But for, this is not who he was for all eternity. For all eternity, he was a spiritual being, it, God Almighty. He was, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As Christians, we believe in a trinity. We have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus uh, was with the Father for all eternity, making uh, the heavens and the earth, uh, the universe, and all that we live in. And He is the light of the world. If you come to Him, you would not walk in darkness. His light can overcome uh, any darkness. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. John the Baptist came and he told the people to repent. Uh, and he told them and he gave them a baptism of repentance of going down in the water, coming up again, because there was one coming after him who was greater than him, that his, his sandals he was not worthy to untie. And so Jesus has come, and what we need to do now is believe in the Son of God who, who saves us from our sins and, and, and which repent and change and stop going one way in our own way where we want to be in control and turn the other way and turn towards the living God where there's salvation and hope and light and life. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. That we're so distracted, we, we see everything else in this world. Father, be with that fire engine, protect them, give them success in what they're doing. Amen. And Father, and we can get so distracted by the world where Jesus came in humility and meekness and servitude and he gave his life and like this was no true king no true messiah he wouldn't have been crucified like this but what is embarrassing to the world what's humiliating to the world god used to so the so the fools of this world could become wise and believe in god but to all who did receive him uh, he came to his own. His own people did not receive him. Jesus came to the Jews. He came to his own people. He himself being a Jew, but the Jews rejected him, hated him, were jealous of him. Even though he did signs and wonders and miracles of raising people from the dead and feeding people supernaturally uh, with five loaves and two fish, he fed over 5,000 men and the women and children. But the Jews hated him and, and got him killed. But who all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And I love this verse, that if you would believe in Jesus, believe in who he said he was, that he's the Messiah, he's the Son of Man, he's the Son of God, if you believe, and that there's no other name under heaven on which you can be saved, but only in the name of Jesus, you can be saved. And you can be changed where you're not your old self anymore, but you can be become a child of God and be brought into the kingdom of God all through Jesus that so we get to be adopted in his family uh, and this world is in our home anymore but we look for the new heaven and the new earth where God brings uh, the fulfillment of his kingdom verse 13 who are born not of blood nor the will of the flesh nor the will of man but God it's a supernatural act when God puts his spirit inside you and gives you new life right is anyone hopeless is anyone depressed is anyone stressed and anxious I know I've been so many times in my life just so down so depressed uh, just thinking this life is so pointless and hopeless but 
when I sought God, I found it. When I read the Bible, I read his word, I found hope and I found life and I found transformation in Jesus. I put my faith in him and I got new life and new hope by being born again, by God giving me his spirit and making me one of his children. Verse 14, And the word, which is Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, that Jesus came and he came in graceness. He came and he hung out with the sinners. He hung out. He, God loves us even in our sin. He wants relationship with us. He left heaven to walk on earth and be amongst us. He's crazy about us, but he also comes in truth saying that we're sinful and, and that we need to repent and change for our sin. But what we do, we get to be born of God and be brought into the kingdom of heaven. John 15, or John 1 chapter, chapter 1 verse 15. John bore witness about him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. That even though Jesus is born in time and space, he's existed for all eternity. He's God Almighty put on flesh. That's how God's not distant, just laughing at our suffering, laughing at our existence. But he's a God who came and walked among us. He, he cared enough. He humbled himself enough to put himself through what we go through personally. He knows it firsthand and he wants to help you. He wants to be a refuge and a strength for you. If you'd come to him and, and, and cry out to him, he will draw near to you when you draw near to him. And from his fullness we have received grace upon grace for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth come through Je but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ no one ever has ever seen God the only God who is at the father's side he has made him known that through Jesus we are no longer condemned for our sins and under the punishment and the wrath of God but we have received grace upon grace because not only do we have this earthly life <laughs> but we get to be saved from our sin. And not only are we forgiven and given mercy, but we're given grace. We're given Christ's righteousness. We're made holy before God that we're justified by your holy, awesome God who made of all of heaven and earth because of Jesus' blood and his sacrifice, grace upon grace. And now there's no longer death, but we will never die, but we'll be raised with Christ in life and be with our Father forever in heaven. And there's going to be just so much joy and there's no more tears no more crying no weeping in heaven so i look forward to the day when we get new bodies a new heaven but it's only by being found in christ by believing in him can you have this new grace and know god personally that's crazy that we a sinful creature could have relationship with the holy almighty god and not only just a relationship to the servant to a master but he calls us his kids I have kids of my own and I love them so dearly. They're so precious to me. There's nothing that you could do to change my love for my kids or they could do to me. In the same way, God's love is relentless, all-consuming for you. He loves you. He's chasing after you. Romans 8 talks about no heights, nor depths, nor angels, nor demons. Nothing can separate you from God's love. So no matter where you are right now, whether you're feeling far from God, or you feel close to Him, let me know that God's love is chasing after you. He hasn't given up on you. He's crazy about you and wants relationship with you. Uh, Salman, you want to you switch? Let's do it. Next up comes Solomon. He's going to bring the fire. That was just, I was the warm up. I was like the John the Baptist to what he's about to do. <laughs> the God of the Bible is a God of love, but he's also a God of wrath. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 4, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them on fire, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked. For they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. God is love, and he's merciful, and he's drawing us in with his Holy Spirit and telling us to come and repent. He desires that none should perish, but at the same time he's a just God, and he has to punish sin. 
and all unrighteousness. We all know about Jesus, but we don't understand the weight of the cross and what, what that means for us. God's moral law, basically the Ten Commandments, we understand like don't kill, don't steal, you know, don't, don't rape, don't covet, all these different things. Like we, we have an idea of what that is, but basically what that does is the law was made, God, God created the law to show us our sin, to show us the evil that we had in our hearts that we're, that we're doing, and that basically... To show us that we need to change, that we need to be saved. And the thing is, we can try to change and we can try to say that we're morally good people and that we try to do right, but ultimately, if we've done sin, it needs to be punished because God can't be a just God if He just forgives without punishing the wrong. So that's the point of what Jesus came to do and what what he did with his ministry. He told people to repent, to come back to God, and he shed his blood for our sins. The Bible says that there can be no forgiveness for there can be no forgiveness for sins without the shedding of blood, and it only comes in Jesus. Jesus is the only blood, the only sacrifice that can cover us, not our good works. But faith without works is dead, meaning that if you're not living for God, if you're not repenting from your sin, then you are you're at risk of going into hell because the Bible, Jesus says in Revelation that the double-minded, I, you're neither hot nor cold, I'll spit you out of my mouth. So if you say, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, I follow Jesus, I'm a good person, you go to church, but you're looking at poor by yourself at night, you're going out and you're partying throughout the week, you're living in sin, you're not going to heaven. Now that doesn't mean that just because you sin, you're going to hell, but if you don't have a repentant heart, a heart that's turning away from sin and humbling yourself before God, I don't know if you're in the right, friend. God loves you, and He cares about you, and He sent Jesus to die for you. This is real. That's why we're out here talking to you, sounding like idiots, like fools, because we believe this is real. This is the hope that we have, that we're not ashamed of the gospel, but it's, it's the power of God to bring salvation unto men.